The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, for they thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why are doubts arising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see. For ghosts do not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. And he said to them, do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate in their presence. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, The Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance of sins, repentance and forgiveness of sins, is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You, you are witnesses of these things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to step down here and got a couple things to show during our children's sermon. How are you? You doing good? Awesome. Like I said, I got a couple things here. I want to show them to you. So I'm going to scoot up close to the camera here. Do you see what these are? Can you tell? These are Legos. You guys ever play with Legos? One of my favorite toys to play with. I remember my parents not liking them too much when I laid them on the floor. But when you put them together, put them together, you can build things out of them, right? You could build a car or maybe a a house, or almost anything that you can imagine, you can build with Legos by putting them together, right? Well, there's also a way that God uses us when we are together to build things, to to do special things, to take take care of one another, right? And and how do we come together a a lot of the time? One of the, the biggest things that we do is we eat. This is just a, a paper plate. We eat together, and that brings people together. And as we eat together, we learn about each other, and then we can actually build things and, and do things as well as we do those things, right? So I got this paper bag, and you can see there's, there's nothing in the bag. It's empty, right? So when God brings us together, or when we like, like to play together, and, and then God brings us together with a meal, and, and we're there all together, do you know what happens? God puts us all together. See, this is a plate that's got Legos on it. It's supernatural because God does God's work through us and putting us together. It's one of those things that we, as long as we work together and we use God's grace, God can do special things through us, right? God can do special things through us as we work together. As we come together in the meals that we eat, as we come together in, as a church, as we come together as families, all in God's grace to do what God has called us to do. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for togetherness, for being with us, for causing us to work together together so that we may proclaim your grace 
to all people so that we can tell all of our friends how much you love us. Help us to share that love with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, children. That's awesome. Now we're going to head back up here so that we can begin our proclamation today. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you today. Amen. So have you ever thrown someone a surprise birthday party? It's pretty difficult to do. Misty threw one for me on my 40th birthday. We were out in, in um, our second year of seminary, and we were heading back to Fort Wayne so that we could celebrate with family. And Missy had told me, because we were in Fort Wayne, that one of our friends, our couple friends, that they wanted to have dinner over at their place, and I, I figured that would, be, that would be great. So when we got to our friend's house, I was greeted by 20 people screaming, surprise! And then, of course, everyone is like, were you surprised? And in the back of my mind, I, I wanted to be. But I can usually tell when Missy's up to something and trying to hide something. Or at least I think I can. Right, dear? But the tell that I noticed was all the cars parked in the adjacent cul-de-sac to our friend's house. So until I saw that, you know, I wasn't expecting that large of a, a group of friends gathered yelling, surprise! So yes, I was generally surprised, mostly. But the best surprises are those we never see coming. The disciples never anticipated Jesus' resurrection. The grand Easter surprise. They were generally, gen genuinely though, surprised. Now, surprise is defined as an unexpected or astonishing event, fact or thing. The synonyms for surprise are shock, amazement, astonishment, and disbelief. In today's readings, we hear about Several people surprised, shocked, amazed, and disbelieving. And some, or so for some background into our gospel reading, what preceded it is the road or the walk to Emmaus. It's a familiar story about the crucifixion, and then three days later, a couple of Jesus' followers were walking to Emmaus and talking with one another about what do we do next, wondering what was going on. They were shocked, to say the least. Then Jesus shows up, yet they don't recognize Jesus. And he steps into the conversation and asks, what are you talking about? They fill him in on, on what's going on, you know, that the one they thought was the Messiah, who, was rede who would redeem Israel, was handed over to the authorities and crucified. Then to make things more perplexing, some of the women of their group went to the tomb where he was buried and it was empty. Moreover, they saw an, a vision of angels who said he was alive. They didn't know what to think. They were shocked and in disbelief. The disciples of our gospel reading feel the same shock and disbelief as that couple walking to Emmaus. Jesus suddenly stood among them and said, Peace be with you. The disciples were startled and frightened, thinking that they had seen a ghost. And again, in our first reading in Acts this morning, we hear Peter addressing the Israelites who share in the shock and disbelief, again, because of what God has done. Prior to where the, the Acts reading begins today, Peter and John were walking to the temple. As they were going through the gate to the temple, they saw a man who could not walk. He, he was always carried there by friends or family and put there to beg for the rest of the day. This happened day after day, week after week, month after month. Begging for alms as people passed by going to church or temple, the lame man asked Peter and John for some money. They didn't have any cash on them, so they prayed over him. They, they said in verse 6, Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. The lame man was made strong and began to jump and leap and walk. And he walked right into the temple, praising God, where people recognized him as that same man that was there week after week, month after month, begging. Those 
looking on, were filled with wonder and amazed. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. Many were surprised in today's reading. The couple on the walk to Emmaus, the disciples, and now those in the temple. But they are not the only ones surprised. What makes this a double surprise? Jesus was surprised as well. Jesus' reaction seemed to be amazement. Jesus was astonished that his followers were not believing he had returned from the dead. Just check out what he says. Jesus' reaction to those on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, verse 25. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Jesus' reaction to the disciples in the room was, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Even when Peter addresses the Israelites after the healing of the blamed man, they were in utter astonishment, saying, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? Even though Jesus is surprised and shocked by his disciples in their astonishment, he doesn't throw them into the wind or leave them abandoned. He meets them right where they are, in their foolishness, in their disbelief, and begins again. He connects with them again in rational ways. He shows the disciples his hands and his feet. He asks them to realize that he is physically there with them once again. He shows them his hands and his feet and asks even to touch him. He says, feel me. I am flesh and bones. Seeing the disciples are in disbelief and still wondering, even after that, he asks them for something to eat. There's something about sharing a meal with Jesus that connects this community of believers. In the breaking of the bread with the couple on the walk to Emmaus, you might remember they finally recognize Jesus and feel the passion of his teachings burning in their hearts. As he, witnessed, as he witnesses the disciples in their disbelief and as they are still wondering, he asks for something to eat and they give him some broiled fish. There's something special in sharing a meal with others. It is what we long for as a church community. We long to get back to our fellowship hour, to see one another, shake hands. Maybe bump fist is a better thing to do right now. And, and though we catch up on Zoom, it's just not quite the same. And Jesus knew it wouldn't be the same for the disciples either. That is why as he was teaching them from the scriptures, he also gave them the gift of this meal, this reminder of breaking of bread. Jesus is showing his followers he is with them through this meal, just as we remember. He is with us as we share this meal each Sunday morning. Again, I know it's not the same doing this live at the same time in different locations, but be patient. We'll get back to it very soon. Jesus doesn't stop with simply sharing a meal, though. He continues to share with them the scripture. To reinforce what he was teaching them all along, he, he does one better. He opens their minds to the scripture and the fulfillment of scripture in light of his resurrection. That's what makes all the difference. See, you, you know, when I was thinking about my 40th birthday surprise party that Missy threw me, and I said I usually don't notice when Missy's up to, to something. In light of that surprise, I began to put the pieces together. Oh, that was the reason why that mysterious phone call happened and she didn't want to talk about it. 
oh, that's why when I asked other, our other friends if they wanted to do something, they said they were busy. As the disciples look back at what Jesus taught them and what the scriptures told them, as they look back through the resurrection, you can almost see their faces going, oh, this is what happened. That's the reason why Jesus told us all of this. Finally, their minds were opened to what Jesus taught them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then their minds were opened to understand the scripture. You can almost imagine the look on their faces. Jesus returned to open the, the scriptures through his resurrection is what saved the church in the early Christian community. It pulled them back together, proving that God was still with them, keeping God's number one promise of loving us through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It gave them the fortitude they needed. Like Peter and John, as they healed the lame beggar, Peter tells the Israelites, in this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets and that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Jesus' resurrection was a traumatic surprise. Yet what Jesus did in coming back and reteaching the disciples propelled them into the hope of the future, the hope of a promised universal restoration, which is better translated as restoration of all things or restoration of all peoples. Jesus never gives up on his followers. We are asked to join him in this meal to feel the presence of Jesus and that presence restores us. For what is the next big question? Right, why do we come back to this meal each week? Well, pastor, so we feel the presence of Jesus. Okay, then why do we come back to this meal to feel Jesus' presence or God's presence? Well, to feel good. Well, yes, why? Of course we feel that. But if we are part of God's community, something bigger than ourselves, what about the rest of the community? Each time we wonder what's next, Jesus, or just as the disciples wondered that themselves, Jesus shows up and points them back to Scripture. Jesus points them back to the promises made to Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Isaac, and Jacob. Each of those characters left their homelands they, they left what was familiar. They left what was comfortable for a promise through faith. None of these individuals did everything right, but they did the best they could and stepped forward in faith. Sometimes they saw or experienced what God promised, and other times it was the next generation who was washed in these promises of God but they never stopped sharing the love of God or this meal or opening scripture. They never stopped being forever changed by that faith. A couple weeks ago, I told you about an article that stated only 47% of people today claim to be part of a faith community or church. It's the lowest percentage since the poll began over 80 years ago. If you are wondering what to do about the state of the church, reminiscent of the disciples wondering what to do next, maybe it's time that we take Jesus' advice and look back into Scripture. In 35 days that are left in Easter season, open your minds, hearts, and souls by opening the Bible. Take some time to read and ponder. You are witnesses to these things. You are called and loved 
children of God, look back to Scripture. Renew your faith. Jesus will meet you there. Jesus, the resurrected Christ, shows up as we walk roads of trouble and sit in lonely rooms of doubt and fear. Jesus meets us in our foolishness and astonishment, only to begin again, asking, what does Scripture tell you about me and the love of God? Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. But what is the promise that Jesus keeps? That if anything dies, it will be resurrected. Our life, our faith, our church, Jesus will meet us where we are and start all over again. Jesus says, look, here I am. Let's get back to Scripture and begin again. Life is what God promises. Life to the full. For us followers, sometimes it takes death to remind us that God's promise is a new, full life. And God does God's best work with dead things. For God has conquered death. Amen. Amen.